What's up guys, Filterless here. Today we're gonna to be comparing four gigabytes versus eight gigabytes of VRAM on 16 different games just to see what kind of performance differences we get. So let's go ahead and get started. The first game we have is Resident Evil 2 Remake and you can see we're running balanced at 1080p with ultra quality for the FSR. And we have four gigs on the left, eight gigs on the right. As you can see right now, it's pretty close, about the same across the board. And this game runs extremely well on here. It's actually really impressive how good it runs. This is something I had a lot of trouble getting running properly on the Steam Deck where I enjoyed playing it. And on here, I'm able to just kind of set some settings, let it run and, and enjoy playing. All right, so this is pretty much neck and neck. As you can see on the left with four gigs, we're at 83, 68 for the 1% lows, 60 for the 0.1, and on the right, we're at 83, 69, and 62. So slightly, very slightly within margin of error on those 1% as well as the 0.1%. Next up, we have Alien Isolation. This is the built-in benchmark mode. It's running Ultra 1080p. And you can see on the right, we're getting about a 6% performance gain in the averages. And we're hitting an additional 7 FPS in the 1%. However, if you look at the 0.1% lows, we are at 14 on the right versus 30 on the left. But if you look at the frame time counter, that could be within margin error. I'm not seeing any additional stutters just in that or the gameplay itself. One thing that is slightly interesting is if you look at the GPU clock, it's around 2000 megahertz and we have about 18, 1900 on the left usually. So the right is running slightly higher most of the time. So wrapping things up on this benchmark, it looks like we got about 7% higher and the averages on the right with eight gigs, 100 FPS versus 93. The 1% lows is 73 versus 69. The 0.1 is because of a stutter right at the end. You can even see it on the graph. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to that, even though they were slightly higher on the four gigs from what I could tell. All right, now onto Bioshock Infinite. We're running the Ultra DX11 at 1080p. And this one so far is very close. It seems to be a really common trend that eight gigabytes is giving just a slight performance edge over four gigs in a lot of these games we're going to be testing all right i'm wrapping things up with this benchmark it looks like we got 74 for the average on the right with 41 for the one percent lows 22 for the 0.1 percent lows with the eight gigs and on the left with the four gigs 72 39 and 26 so even on this one slightly higher 0.1 percent lows like i said they could be within margin of error there Next up, we have another classic Bioshock game, Bioshock Remastered, the first one. We're running 1080p in these settings right here that you're seeing. And as you can see right now, very close between the two. And as we go in this room, we're going to freeze both of the FPS counters. And as you can see, we've got 145 on the left versus 144 on the right. 104 versus 102 and 98 versus 92 so definitely very close not much difference in this game next up we got crisis at 720p high settings with ray tracing off once again the charts are pretty close we have a slightly higher 0.1 percent on the left right now we're definitely getting more stuttering on the right with the eight gigs for whatever reason right now. They're bigger stutters and you can see that averages reflect that uh, for the 1% low. It's 37 on the right versus 48 on the left. However, the 0.1% are pretty close and the actual average itself is two FPS higher on the right. Moving on to Cyberpunk, we're at medium with auto FSR at 720p. And as you can see right here, we're at 57 average on the right versus 53 on the left, 45 for the 1% on the right versus 40 on the left, and 43 for the 0.1% on the right versus 30 on the left. All right, and so wrapping up this benchmark, we've got 59 on the left for the average versus 64 on the right, 30% for the 1% low versus 42. So it looks like it's definitely helping out Cyberpunk to have the eight gigs, 0.1%. That still is from a stutter near the end. They were pretty close, so I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. Moving on to Diablo 4, running 1080p, V-Sync is off. For FSR, we're running quality. 
and medium settings. And as you can see right now, we're getting a noticeable increase in the 1% as well as a little bit in the averages right now. The 0.1% are pretty close. And wrapping up Diablo 4, we got 58 on the left versus 60 for the averages on the right, 40 for the 1% lows versus 44 on the right, and 17 for the 0.1% lows with the 4 gigs versus 23 on the right. So it looks like just a slight improvement with the 8 gigs. Now onto Dirt Rally, we're running 1080p in these settings and medium preset. And it looks like we're getting a slightly higher FPS average of 1% on the left. And wrapping this one up, we got 95 for the average on the left versus 92, 74 for the 1% versus 70, and we got the same 0.1% lows at 64. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5, we're running 720p with these settings. And we're using the medium preset. And here we can see we're getting much higher averages on the right with the eight gigs, as well as the 1%. However, we are getting that 27%, 0.1% low on the right versus 48 on the left. And wrapping up the Forza Horizon 5 benchmark, our 0.1% is actually caught up. So did the 1% on the right, as well as the average. We're getting 79 versus 70. It's a noticeable difference in Forza Horizon 5 going from 4 gigs to 8 gigs. I did get a low memory message when I was playing in 8 gigs. However, I didn't really notice any stuttering. It ran smoothly and at a higher frame rate than when I was running 4 gigs. So despite that warning, the game seems to be running fine with 8 gigs. Now moving on to GTA 5, 1080p with these settings right here. And it looks like our averages are a little higher on the right as well as the 1%. However, we are at 9 FPS for the 0.1. And if you look at the frame time graph, that looks like it was just an initial stutter that caused that 9. However, it still is sitting there. But if you look at the actual gameplay, it's definitely not 53 versus 9. And so here we're flying the jet. It's still at 9 on the right for the 0.1. Y'all could let me know if you see any additional stuttering on the right versus the left. It looks about the same to me. And we're getting that slightly higher average as well as slightly higher 1% lows on the right. And wrapping up the GTA 5 benchmark, we're at about 109 on the right versus 102 on the left. 62 for the 1% versus 57 on the left and 43 for the 0.1% lows on the right. It did catch up, got rid of that nine we were seeing versus 48 on the left with the four gigs. So overall, just a slight improvement with the eight gigs. Moving on to Metro, we have 720p medium preset. And on the left, you can see 71 for those 0.1% versus 60. So in basically every game we've tested, those 0.1s do seem to be slightly higher. And the averages and 1% lows are very... Or we can see here it already kind of leveled off and they're very close. It looks like there's hardly any difference between the 4 and 8 gigs right here especially. And so wrapping up this benchmark, definitely super close. 79 versus 80 for the average. 47 and 47 on the 1% and 41 to 43 for the 0.1% lows. Moving on to Microsoft Flight Simulator, we're at 720p medium preset. And here we are seeing 13 for the 0.1% lows, but if you look at the frame time graph, it's very close between the two. And so it looks like we're really close. We just hit a stutter on the right. So they were both at 12 for the 0.1 and it went down to four on the right. And all it takes is one small stutter for something like that to happen. It just did it again. So in this game, it does look like four gigs, which is really surprising, might run slightly better, especially if you look at the 1% lows. And wrapping up this benchmark, it looks like four gigs did do a bit better. So we got 24 on the 1% low versus 17 and 12 for the 0.1% low versus four on the right with the eight gigs. Definitely a surprising result because I thought eight gigs would definitely benefit this game. So moving on to Modern Warfare 2, we are running balanced with AMD FSR 2.1. And this was the most noticeable game where eight gigs was a huge difference. There's these major stutters happening on four gigs, which makes it hard to play. I actually ended up just quitting out of the match on the left, whereas we actually successfully extracted on the right. 
And you can see where it's really taking a hit. 10 FPS on the left for the 1% low versus 42 on the right. And those 9.1% or 7 at this point versus 30 on the right. And if you pay attention when I'm moving the camera, you'll just see it stuttering. It's like freezing and it completely messes up trying to take shots with weapons, especially a sniper rifle. So a very noticeable difference in Call of Duty Warzone. I was playing DMZ here. Moving on the Red Dead Redemption, we got 720p and just the balanced preset. Fast forwarding through the benchmark a bit, we're pretty close actually. 21 for the 0.1% on both, 42 for the 1% average, 1% uh, lows, and 86 versus 90 on the right for the average FPS. Wrapping up this benchmark, it's extremely close. You can see we're getting 74 on the left for the average versus 77 on the right. 42 for the 1% lows on the left versus 43 on the right and getting 17 for the 0.1% lows. So it looks like we're just getting a slight bump like most games with the 8 gigs. Nothing super drastic, just a slightly higher FPS overall. Moving on to Sandstorm, we're at 1080p just using the default medium preset on this game and very close 57 57 41 41 and 35 36 although it just went to 28 on the left but very close regardless and wrapping up this one it's kind of hard to see so i'll read it it's 61 for both averages and we have 41 on the left for the one percent versus 43 on the right and 34 for the 0.1 percent lows on the left versus 36 on the right definitely within margin of error pretty much the exact same on this game between four and eight gigs moving on to the last game the division we're at 1080p with the medium preset with vsync turned off and here you can see we're actually getting better fps on the left so 44 for those one percent versus 31 on the right and 34 for the 0.1 percent versus 27 on the right and wrapping up this benchmark we got 55 for the average with four gigs versus 53 with eight 43 for the one percent lows versus 33 on the right and the 0.1 percent lows did go down to 22 versus 27 however most of the benchmark the left actually did have slightly higher 0.1 percent all right we're moving on to the charts and resident evil 2 it looks like it was really close all with the margin of error and alien in isolation we definitely got a better average and one percent however not as good as those 0.1 percent like i said those could stutter right at the end though however in that it did look like it stuttered a bit more causing those 0.1s in bioshock infinite really close we got a slightly higher average and one percent slightly lower 0.1 percent in bioshock remastered pretty much zero different you can see 92 for the 0.1 versus 98 the averages the one percent that's all margin of error it looks like in crisis remastered it looks like we did better with four gigs just because of those one percent lows being at 48 versus 37 on the eight gigs in cyberpunk there was a noticeable improvement in that game in general going to eight gigs so if you go to eight gigs that's one of your games you like playing i would say eight gigs is definitely worth it in that one just for those one percent lows being higher the averages being quite a bit higher as well as the point one so less stuttering diablo 4 as well seems to benefit slightly from the eight gigs going from 40 to 44 for those one percent and 17 to 23 for the point one percent it looks like Dirt Rally doesn't really matter too much. It actually slightly went down for the averages and the 1% lows. Forza Horizon 5 definitely benefits. This is a game I play a lot and 8 gigs does make a difference. Even more, I would say, than what the charts are showing. So we got 79. You're looking at over 10% performance increase on the averages. Almost 10% going from 55 to 60 for those 1% lows. And then going 49 to 54 for the 0.1% lows. Same thing with GTA 5. Even though the 0.1% low is a little lower on the 8. I think the gameplay itself is actually a bit smoother when you have 8 gigs and you get a slightly higher frame rate. Metro Exodus, really within margin of error on that game. I didn't notice any difference when I was watching them side by side. Microsoft Fight Sim, as we saw, it actually degraded performance quite a bit, running eight gigs over four gigs. So four gigs is definitely a better option on that for my testing. 
However, Call of Duty, the craziest result here, 8 gigs seems to benefit this game a lot. It was almost unplayable on 4 gigs. So y'all could let me know down below if y'all have experienced the stuttering or not. And if you do, try switching it to 8, see what you think. Seems like it performs quite a bit better. Red Dead Redemption 2, very close. We got a slightly higher average, but that's all very close. And Sandstorm, pretty much identical. Not much difference there. As we saw in the division, definitely four gigs, in my opinion, was a smoother experience despite the little stutter at the end. The average, the 0.1% were actually a bit higher for most of the benchmark, but at the end, there was a slight stutter that caused it to go from 30 something to 22. So I'd say overall four gigs for the division is better. And to wrap things up, I think Asus should give us five, six, and seven gigabyte options. They give us auto one, two, three, and four, but for some reason they've chosen to make it go from four gigs of VRAM to eight. I feel like they should give us a nice in-between. I think something like five or six gigs of VRAM would actually be ideal for most people. However, they're not giving us that option. So hopefully there's an update where they can let us choose what we wanna run it at, and then maybe we'd be able to get a more balanced performance between all the games we like playing. And I'm personally running 8 gigs at the moment just because I like Forza Horizon 5 and Call of Duty seems to perform a lot better. The games that suffer don't seem to suffer as much as the games that need the 8 and then don't have the 8. But definitely choose what you like best and what works for the games that you're going to be playing. Anyway, I hope this video provided some value for y'all. If it did, make sure to hit the sub, hit the like button, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.